Hey, it's Philly here from Chris and Philly Functional Medicine on a mission to end body burnout for good. Now, a very common symptom that I see with people with body burnout are food sensitivities. Um, And sometimes it might not even feel like a food sensitivity. It might just be like a combination of weird symptoms and you don't know where it's coming from. So um, a month or a few months ago, I've done a few uh, blog posts, videos on histamine and oxalate sensitivity. Um, You can find those in our blog. But today I wanted to talk about hydrogen sulfide or sulfur sensitivity because this is another um, chemical or slash food sensitivity that can cause a lot of random weird symptoms. So not many many people are aware that you are actually eating sulfur every day. And sulfur is not bad. And I'm going to go in, go, go into what it is, where you can find it, how it can cause issues in the body. Um, but but essentially, most people are fine with eating sulfur. I just wanted to say this at the start because I don't want to um, cause food fear in terms of, oh, I shouldn't be eating anything with sulfur or hydrogen sulfide in it. But there are some individuals who can grow a sensitivity to, to sulfur, and I'll go over why that happens, that can lead to some really nasty symptoms. Symptoms like headaches, body pain, bloating. I'll go over some more of the most common ones soon. Understanding how sulfur interacts with our body is key to understanding why sensitivity occurs and how best to treat it. So first, what is hydrogen sulfide? So just really quick and simple, organic sulfur is required in living tissue in order for the body to function optimally. Now you can get this externally from food. It's also in soil, it's in minerals, it's in a lot of things that grow food and in the food themselves. So we get it through ingestion, but also we can produce hydrogen sulfide in our own body by certain chemical reactions um, that occur in our body, which is again, normal, natural, but if things go a little bit psycho, a little bit haywire, that's where things can go wrong. Um, Okay, so symptoms of sulfur sensitivity. So as I'm reeling out these symptoms, if you're like ticking off three or more, I would start suspecting that maybe there might be a sulfur sensitivity going on. So some common ones, extreme sensitivity to alcohol. So um, that might even be like a sip, a sip or a sniff. It's just like, whoa, your body kind of like freaks out when it has alcohol or you get tipsy really quickly or you have really bad hangovers when you've only had maybe like a glass or two of wine or beer. Um, flushing, really common. Headaches and migraines, also common. Swelling at the body. So that might also look like uh, fluid retention or sometimes you can wake up with just like a really puffy face Um, ammonia smell either coming from your breath or from your bottom (laughs) Um, uh, burning pain is really common including well that's showing up as body pain bladder pain as well so if you're going to the toilet you have a bit of a sensitive bladder feeling like you always need to go because you're not quite emptying and it's not a UTI I would be thinking about sulfur sensitivity Um, gas and bloating so gut issues incredibly common um, including diarrhea and also feeling toxic um Okay, so if you're ticking off a reel of those, continue listening on because you may have a sulfur sensitivity. So what are the root causes of sulfur sensitivity? Why does someone, why can one person be fine with eating all the foods with sulfur, even like nasty preservatives, and another people and another person can't? These are the reasons. So gut dysbiosis. So gut dysbiosis is basically when your microbiome, your good bugs, your neutral bugs, and even your pathogenic bugs go all out of whack. So there should be a nice balance between those. There's a really um, specific bacteria called Desulfibriopyja which is healthy, natural, normal in smaller amounts. But if it overgrows, it produces hydrogen sulfide. So you can get quite, you can like literally these bugs, if they're in too high amounts, will be producing a lot of sulfur in your body, making you your sulfur bucket, your tolerance level too high. 
Um, also along with that, uh, that can often happen in the large intestines, but you can also develop SIBO, so small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And specifically that hydrogen sulfide producing bacteria can travel up into your small intestines. That's really common, especially if people are experiencing bloating and diarrhea. Um, especially bloating straight after eating foods within 15 to 30 minutes, um, then again, I start thinking about maybe the SIBO might be part of the presentation of what's going on for you. Uh, okay, so detox issues, um, another root cause, which can cause sulfur sensitivity. So your liver plays a major role in processing and clearing out any excess hydrogen sulfide from your system. Um, so that's really important. So if your whole detox pathway is kind of shut down, you can have a buildup of sulfur, ammonia, which can trigger more production of hydrogen sulfide in your system. The other interesting thing is that your liver needs sulfur containing amino acids to function properly. So let's just say liver was working in overtime for whatever reason, just living in a toxic world. Eventually your liver pathways start burning out because you're burning through those sulfur containing amino acids and now you're really depleted in them. Then your detox pathways struggle to then get rid of something like sulfur or hydrogen um, sulfide, whether that's coming from the bugs that you're producing, heavy metals, um, the food that you're eating. And the tricky thing where people get really stuck in this vicious cycle is that you actually need more sulfur containing foods and even supplements to get these detox pathways working properly. But for someone who's sensitive, they react to those things, um, which can be really tricky. It can get really tricky to, to try and like self-treat a chemical sensitivity, um, which is why I'd highly recommend working with a qualified practitioner to get you out of that trap. Another root cause is heavy metals. So there's a strong uh, affinity between sulfites and heavy metals like mercury and lead. Um, so if your detox pathways aren't working very well, heavy metals can get stuck in your fat tissues, causing like an even more sensitivity to sulfur. Preservatives is another one. We live in a very processed industrial world um, and a lot of the time sulfates are in our packaged foods, even in things like dried fruits like dates, sultanas, apricots often use sulfites to preserve the dried fruit. And so again, some people can eat that steel of guts no issues but then other people will start developing issues and sensitivities to these preservatives which can lead to mast cell degranulation so that's basically where your immune cells start releasing these like inflammatory chemicals because it's being attacked by foreign preservatives and over time this can cause a, a sensitivity to sulfur now, the last root cause, which I left to last, is nervous system dysregulation. It's actually probably the most important root cause there is and the deepest root cause. So none of your body systems, so detox pathways, microbiome, um, adrenals, none of these body systems can actually burn out or become imbalanced unless the nervous system has become dysregulated. And there are two main reasons why the nervous system becomes dysregulated. First of all, systemic inflammation. So that's things like heavy metals and pathogens and nasty foods and preservatives. But on the other side, something that's rarely addressed in functional medicine, naturopathy, nutrition, are your dysfunctional beliefs um, that you have about yourself, which can cause your nervous system to constantly be in a state of flight, flight or flight and then it can lead to body burnout in other areas. So those beliefs can be things like, you know, very ingrained beliefs that you've created, even as a child, like I'm not good enough, I'm unlovable, I'm weak, I'm incapable, which can filter on into your adult life. Maybe you're consciously aware of this, but very often we're actually unconsciously aware that we have these hidden dysfunctional beliefs, which are just stressing out our nervous system 24 seven. So in our practice, oh my gosh, we absolutely address this because it's really difficult to heal these body systems without addressing the unconscious state. Um, okay, so let's get into foods. So um, I didn't mention foods as being, besides preservatives and sulfites, being a root cause because I actually don't believe that um, eating foods high in sulfur is the root cause. A healthy body should be able to eat all healthy foods. Um, However, if you are showing signs of sulfur sensitivity or if you've been diagnosed with it, you will want to reduce your consumption of 
hydrogen sulfide containing foods for a period to reset your body. So I wanted to go over just really quickly how you can use a low hydrogen sulfide diet for therapy. Um, so this is great. Like if I have a, a client come into me and I'm suspecting, you know, they've got a bunch of symptoms that are all linked to sulfur sensitivity. Maybe they've actually noticed that they've reacted to a supplement or a food. Then I'll start thinking about, all right, well, in order for us to get uh, to make an assessment around this, let's use the low hydrogen sulfide diet to test. So basically, you go on uh, this diet for about four to six weeks. If your symptoms improve, then it's highly likely hydrogen sulfide sensitivity is part of your overall health picture. Um, if you don't improve, then bring the foods back in. And if you have a flare up, highly likely there's a hydrogen sulfide issue. Um, but if you do bring the foods in, nothing changes, you didn't really get any benefit from being on the diet anyway, then it's highly likely that hydrogen sulfide isn't an issue. So the foods that I recommend my clients to avoid for the first four to six weeks are foods high in hydrogen sulfide. So these are things like cruciferous veg vegetables, which are just like your lovely, green, healthy, so good for the detox system vegetables but they're really high in sulfur so if someone has a sensitivity it can add fuel to the fire so that would be things like broccoli and cauliflower brussels sprouts cabbage kale mustard greens also onions and garlics are really high in sulfur and so are eggs and red meats and dairy products and then i'd also be completely avoiding any sulfite preservative that might be on the ingredients list in a packaged food now, there's also some supplements high in sulfur too. So sometimes people go on this diet, but they don't realize that supplements they're taking might actually be causing sensitivity or symptoms to erupt as well. So I do recommend that people just over the trial period, stop any supplements that have sulfur containing amino acids in them. Things like um, N-acetylcysteine, methionine, glutathione, lipoic acid. Um, some of these can definitely trigger symptoms. Again, they're beautiful amino acids that our body needs and actually craves, especially if you have a sensitivity. But in order just to rule this issue in and out, stop the supplements. If you do have sulfur sensitivity, then I'd highly recommend, again, working with a practitioner to try and work to make sure that you're supporting your liver in a very safe way so that you can reduce those um, sulfur levels down. All right, so um, as I was reeling off that f those foods and you're like, oh, I don't really know what to eat. If, if this is something that you would like to, to work on or to test, um, just know that we have created a bunch of meal plans to make it super easy to do a low hydrogen sulfide diet as well as other healing diets that we have. So things like low histamine diets, low salicylate diets, low oxalate diets, anti-candida diets. Um, often when uh, these uh, diets can be quite restrictive, and people get really confused. So we've just made it super easy. And in our ending body burnout method, we have a beautiful online portal with so many resources, including heaps of meal plans to make this journey way easier for you. Um, okay. And as I mentioned before, if this is an issue for you, if you end up doing the low hydrogen uh, sulfide diet and you're like, holy moly, Philly was right. I have an issue here. Um, I would highly recommend working with a practitioner because you don't want to be stuck on a restrictive diet long term. That will make things worse over time. You're just wanting to use it short term to reset the body and as part of the healing protocol. So if you do like if you're wondering if you have food sensitivities, if you want help, please reach out. You can either book in for a free discovery call where we have a chat with you for 10 to 15 minutes um, to see, um, to look at your case history and if or how best we can help. Um, or if you're a keen bean and you've been li listening to me rattle on for a long time, um, I'll pop the link down below to just book straight in for a connect the dots initial consult and we will get the process started. Alrighty, signing off now. Thank you.